everybody. Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Thanks for joining me today. I've got a special interview with somebody who has recently whistleblown on one of the biggest OG family vloggers of all time, Shay Carl. Now, after the interview with Shay Carl and Roman Atwood, where they came out with exactly who they really were, and if you go read the comments, you'll see that so many people, the majority of the comments were like agreeing with what I was saying. Not that they watched what I said, but I said the same thing that they said. And they couldn't believe how much they would diminish the conversation about the cheating. So not two days after they that I dropped my video, Montana Dana comes out and drops her little bomb on Shay Carl's family life. And it's crazy. You can go watch her video, but we do a little bit of an extended story time here about kind of what goes on in the back end of the channel, what her role was, and kind of just lending credibility to, to what her allegations are. And it's quite telling because her and others are scared, were scared, well she was scared, but the other ones who have the same allegations are scared to come forward. It's not just the cam girl, it's not just Montana Dana, it's likely many, many others. So, let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and I've got a very special guest with me from, you're not from Montana, are you? From Montana. Oh, you are from yeah, Montana, Dana. From Montana. She's got a YouTube channel out there and recently she's posted a couple videos which piqued my interest and about 100 other, others of you who sent me the video. And I said, let me watch this because I recently just covered a two-part series on Roman Atwood's podcast with Shay Carl where they literally jerked each other off and like didn't talk to the wives about any, uh, it still to this day pisses me off so badly how they just literally brushed it over, didn't ask Colette what she thought, then his uh, Roman Atwood's wife just kind of glossed it over, they laughed about it, said it wasn't a big deal, and it is a big deal. And it's a big deal because it's not the first time it ever happened. Now Dana enters the picture and I say, would you like to come talk to me about this? And her videos are really, really well done, and so, the whole story is laid out in that video, so I'll link that below. Make sure you go watch it because it's very detailed. I'm not going to ask her to hash out the entire process. We will do a Cliff's Note version of that story. But Dan has got information about what it's like behind the scenes of a very famous, if not the most famous, OG YouTube family vlogger. A glimpse into something we don't ever get to see, which is really important, then what he did, what Colette did, and then we're going to go over and talk about what we can do as a collective to stop enabling these D-bags. How's that sound, Dana? Beautiful. Right. I'm, I'm on board. Sorry for the super long intro. That's no, my ADHD. It's it's I appreciate good. you being on the show and um, cool hat. I like your hat. Thank oh, it's you. really nice. Um, so let's get it started anyway. real quick. Just so you don't have to, you know, beat around the bush. Tell mm -hmm. me who you are, kind of how you came up to the point where you just became friends with Shay Carl. Tell me, because okay. I want to establish who you are. Like, okay. where were you born? What kind of cereal do you like? That kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, my favorite color is turquoise. <laughs> um, I'm from Montana. I grew up there, um, born and raised until I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, I took a year off of high school and kind of was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a singer songwriter and do music, um, but I didn't really think college was the route for me. And then I applied for a scholarship, a scholarship. at Berkeley <laughs> College of Music um, um, for the for songwriting, songwriting program. And I got in and yeah, so I moved out to Boston and- I gotta stop you there for one um, second. Yeah. As a fellow musician, I have three full time, full records. I've been on tour as a band. Uh, my wife's a very good singer. She's got a CD. Cool. We're very, very musical in our family. Very musical. I can but tell. Berkeley, you have guitars. I got to tell everybody who doesn't know, Berkeley is <laughs> the the school. If you want to be in music, did John Mayer? Yeah, for like, didn't John Mayer drop yeah, John Berkeley? Mayer. <laughs> yeah, to name drop a little bit. Um, Charlie Puth yeah. was in, the, in class with me and Carmen, who's also goes by Queen Herbie now. Mm -hmm. So How's Charlie Puth? Is I like him. Dude, is he nice I guy? don't know him that uh, well. Like I checked him in at the front desk, and we bantered a little bit, and he commented on my song "A Day" thing I was doing, and it was just, it was just cool. I like like he's just Puth. this cute little dorky kid he's doing cool. funny, like funny videos, and yeah. then he blew up, and I was like, "You go, dude." He's awesome. awesome. I love him. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's one thing we have in common is that we love music. We we are. Yeah. I'm a songwriter. You're a songwriter. Nice. Musicians, and I love it. Cool. So sorry. Yeah. Now continue. Okay. Yeah, music is the best therapy. It's it connects people. It's mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's magical. Mm -hmm. so, it really is. Yeah. Um. So I went to the um 
Berkeley College of Music and graduated with a degree in songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I got, um, after, I, well, I was like, what are you going to do with a degree in songwriting? It's not like you walk in and hand in your resume. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm going to start doing this as if it's my job. Every day I'm going to write a song and just put it up on YouTube and try that for a year. Mm -hmm. And that was right around the time, you know, Shay was huge at that time. He probably had, I don't know how many subscribers, like almost a million. Um, so I was doing this song a day thing and around day a hundred and something, he shouted me out and I got 10,000 subscribers overnight. Now, and before he shouted you out, did, yeah. were you guys talking back and forth? Nothing. He just no. found you and just said, well, look at this awesome lady. You know, it's the weird thing. I woke up and I thought YouTube had a glitch because I had all these comments and all these, you know, views. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, Shaytard sent me, Shaytard sent me. I'm like, what the fuck is a Shaytard? <laughs> I'm like, what? So it was just super, um, it was exciting. But I'm like, wait, is this for real? Mm -hmm. And then I finally was linked to the video where he shouted me out. And um, it was really sweet. He was really, you know, talking up my music. And then he's like, some of them aren't so good. And I'm like, yeah totally um but then he, he you know he like jump started my career massively i didn't even know what vlogging was this was in 2010 okay so vlogging wasn't really a thing like he had just started it you know mm -hmm. um so i um i'm like i guess i'll start vlogging and sharing my life like the people are asking for it why not like you can make a living doing this sure a, that's a living great. you could become more wealthy than most actors and actresses like it's ridiculous right? how much money can be made on youtube like yeah Shay Carl talks about in his interview, and we will allude to it a lot more, like we'll go back and forth on it, that he made something like 10 million in Maker Studios sale. Okay, great. But yeah. what he doesn't talk about is that he made well over 10 million just on his channel, like even double, triple that. Like there's, really? he's got something like in uppers of billions and billions of views. That's insanity. Yeah, That's crazy. so many millions of dollars. It's so many, yeah. So, so I just many. wanted to say that. So you get, in, you get involved, does, do you reach out to him? Does he reach out to you? How does this continue forward? I went out to a VidCon or some kind of something like that and met up with them and met them for the first time. And that was a really cool experience. You know, I got to meet like all these bigger YouTubers because they were like in his hotel room and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like these guys are like making a living, doing what they love and creating. And I'm yeah. like, how cool is that? I really looked up to all of all those people. And VidCon is a place back in the day, probably even better more than it is now. But if you are a YouTuber, aspiring YouTuber, go to these conferences because it gets you a chance to be in front of these people, especially if you're a low level mid YouTuber like us. Yeah. It's a good place to connect with other people. Um, but, and that's what they were doing. Shay Carl went out there. He, he, he contacted other creators in the same vein as him. And that's how Maker Studios got started. Maker Studios became the biggest I think the fastest rising subscribed channel on all of the platform ever, like maybe not today, but it was yeah. at the time a massive deal. So did and you, how, how did cool you connect that? There? Yeah, you that's know, amazing. It's so cool. And like, it was just ex an exciting time. There's so much excitement around it. And I felt like a very s small fish, you mm. know, in this world, but it was just like, man, I know like one of the biggest YouTubers. That's so cool. And I, you know, I looked up to like Charles and Allie, I got to meet them at one point and um before it was the new charles and ally who's the yeah. old charles and charles and ally and um he really connected me in that world in a big way um shaded at one point he's like come down to la come sign with maker and um we'll do you'll do collaborations it'll help your channel you'll help you grow and um yeah he was just really supportive of my music and he like would use my, my songs in his videos and stuff i mm -hmm. get i would know because i would get a big bump in yeah. like i'd get like you know under two thousand views and then all of a sudden i'd have one with ten thousand views mm -hmm. so i'm like oh shay must use my song in his video yesterday mm -hmm. so um it was very professional like it was very at that point it was just like oh this guy's helping me you know he really likes my music and putting it in his videos. So can I ask you a question? I know this is going to sound because I'm just kind of looking around the edges of all this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask you a question? Someone who's a bigger creator, this guy pretty much at the time is the one of the biggest. Okay. Do mm -hmm. you and you and you I might be way off. But do you think that he uses his platform to leverage good looking women to say, look, I'll give you this thing. I'll sign you on this thing. And he uses it kind of like as a in to attractive women. I know that's, I'm trying to not be jerk about that, but do you think that's well, something that he, that, that did he get a vibe like that at all? I, mean, I didn't get that vibe, but in hindsight, it broke my heart when he kind of violated trust with me because mm -hmm. I really believed he just genuinely, I was his friend and he believed in me as a musician. I genuinely believed that that's where his heart was. Okay. 
And then once all this stuff, once our dynamic changed, like in hindsight, it's like, oh, was he just doing that to prime me? And, you know, because this is I something, don't know. Well, no, because I'm this, not is, inside this is a big deal. Head. Because a lot of people will diminish your story and say, well, he just, and we'll get to it in a second, but they'll say, oh, it's just, it's not a big deal. But there's a power dynamic here. Men and, and women, right. and mostly men, let's just be real. I'm um, a needy woman a, at that point. You know, I need some help with my career and, and he can me, be the hero. And and men, like, okay, so uh, who was it that came up with the book um, Catch and Kill, the podcast with Roman, um, what's his name? Ronin, Ronin something. I forget. Basically what these guys do like Weinstein and all these guys do is they use their power mm -hmm. to promise jobs and to promise things to women. And what they do is they get it to get in their pants. And I'm serious. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. It happens all the time. And that's what brought down Harvey Weinstein. And that is yeah. very, very, very much the thing that happens in Hollywood and massive productions. Like Jeanette McCurdy just came out with a book about how she got her mom died. And she was in an industry where men, she called the creator, would take advantage of these people. So it's, it's, I don't want to diminish people's because at the same time you want to you want to believe that what you had is awesome and I do honestly mm -hmm. listen to your music you're talented it is, okay don't worry, you're it talented is. <laughs> okay let's be real but you never know you you want it to be about that but you know being somebody I don't know I just I feel like I'm trying to look around that edge there and say did, yeah. has he done this to multiple people and I'm pretty sure there's not everybody's going to come out but I think more people are going to come out after your story you know. I hope so, just for their own healing. I don't, I'm not like, let's take Shea Coral down. I'm not on that mission whatsoever. I want mm -hmm. him and Colette to have peace if that's where they're at. I want his, I want his kids. Oh, I could cry. Yeah. I love his kids so much. And I want well, them to have peace. Okay, you know? but I want to sit there for a second because that's what seems to be hitting you so hard is this, this you, the, they have these kids and they seem to be amazing kids and everything yeah. else, right? And you were behind the scenes. We'll get to that in a second. But like that hits you the hardest and it says a lot about you to be honest with me. But what, what I do on this channel is I'm trying to be the voice for those kids who don't yeah. give informed consent or who can't give informed consent right. to their futures being plastered all over the world. Now, the th thing you were scared about talking this is because you know that those kids are going to hear this and that's going to break their heart because you were close to them. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's just a necessary evil at this point. But those kids well, have to live their lives in this world now. Right. But that in itself, like Shay hides behind that because that enables him even more as he knows he's protected by his family because his family, he has a really good family. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's the reason I didn't say anything is because I didn't want his kids to have to go through any more trauma. And I hear you. It's just it's awful. again, it says a lot more about you. So sorry, let's get back to Maker Studios. You okay. you 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 upend your entire life. You're like, let's do it. This is the dream. Let's roll. Yeah, let's go for it. And they put their money where their mouth was. We started filming videos. I collabed with a bunch of people. Courtney Pants, like back in the day, was mm -hmm. one of them. And I loved her videos like she was cool. Um, so I got to collaborate with all these people. I was making friends and it was just a world I loved being in. I loved the behind the scenes, the production. And, um, you know, I met some, some of my very best friends. The first person I met there was my best friend, Allie. And to this day, like she's my best friend from LA. From Charles um, and Allie? No, Allie was Shay's assistant or, okay. um, yeah, okay. like manager type of person. Yeah. So. Uh, a handler, maybe, if you will. Yeah, she just kind of <laughs> took care of everything, you know. Um, mm -hmm. She's kind of a boss lady. Okay, is she that. still there with them? No, she's uh, she's working with uh, Anthony Padilla from Smosh Padilla. Yeah. I know I'm on YouTube I and I have like 140. I know I'm the I don't same. Know I don't pay attention. <laughs> I only know the people from that from yeah. when I was yeah. the people I've met. But yeah. it sounds like you were inside of a world that was really, really growing and be like it was cutting edge. It was all, and you were just right down yeah. center of the whole thing, and you get to play music. Okay, exciting. and if everything's going yeah. great. Then what happens? <laughs> well, no, I mean it's not to the. Going uh, right. We're getting well, into. It. I like I like this slow lead up. So you're at Maker. Everything's going great, and then what? Comes time to sign a contract for the music stuff, and I was fine signing with them as you know, as Maker Studios doing the video stuff. But then they um, they were launching this music studio. And I don't know if I was, was the very first person to sign, but I was one of them. And they wanted me to sign a work for hire contract, which means it's it's popular in Nashville. Like if you, you show up at your job, you write from nine to five and they own the rights to your songs. The company owns the yeah, rights. Yeah, that's but, bullshit. That's but bullshit as an artist. Yeah, that's bullshit. it is. It's typically not anything, even with big record labels, it's not a work for hire thing for the songwriter because I'm a songwriter and a performer. Mm -hmm. So um, the songwriter owns the right to the song. And 
I learned in my business classes, thank God, at Berklee mm-hmm. College of Music, never to sign this kind of contract, never to sign a work for hire contract. So even though I was so like starry eyed and so grateful for this opportunity and excited, I could not, I sat with myself and I'm like, I can't sign this. I can't sign my life away. I can't sign my music over to the, so the company would own the music. So if Mm -hmm. my song that I wrote got played in a TV show later, like I wouldn't see any of that. I get nothing. Can I say too, as an artist, as a person who was in that industry for years and years and years, this is the chachiest, most disgusting thing that rich people can do to creators because Mm -hmm. they know and they're just playing the they're just playing the Chachiest. quantity over quality game, right? They're playing quantity over quality. They'll do quantity, quantity, quantity. They'll throw you a hundred, few hundred bucks a day, whatever the case may be. Because in the end, if one or two of those songs gets what they need, it yeah. triples their investment, and you get nothing. And yeah. that's I just I people need to understand that that the whole industry is literally a pr- predator for younger upcoming artists, and they do this to people, and it needs to effing stop. Well, I wouldn't have known. Stop. Yeah, I wouldn't have known had I not taken business classes. Yeah. I would have no idea, I'd be like, sure, yeah, this must be what people sign, but it's, it actually isn't typical for any record label to give an, uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe some, maybe, maybe smaller some. ones. some, yeah, but like bigger record labels won't even ask for this. So this is a, it's like a- predatory. He, he yeah. had a predatory practice in Maker Studios, and that's well, something that nobody talks about. And that's that, predatory. I, that's not necessarily Shay. I don't think this contract wasn't, like Shay didn't hand me this contract. This was um, one of the owner's brothers was a musician. So he was kind of starting the music side of things. I don't even remember his name. Like this is- yeah, but Shay, 11 years ago. Shay runs the Maker Studios. Shay is Maker Studios. Maker right. Studios is Shay. So right. I know he didn't handle it. But I'm not going to say Shay did it because like, I only know what who gave me the contract yeah. and who I talked to. Yeah. But it's on yeah. him. Did you talk to Shay about that? So Shay talked to me about it. Okay. <laughs> um, so this guy sits me down, tries to strong arm me. He's like, and there's two guys sitting in the office like trying to get me to sign it. And, and they're like, well, and he was like, well, I signed this contract when I first started. And I'm like, I didn't say this. I wish I did. I'm like, sorry if you signed a shitty contract. I'm not going to. Sorry you're dumb, buddy. Like, sorry, sorry you did something stupid with your yeah. career, but I'm not going to. Um, so I thankfully had enough validation that, or just authority in my life at that point that I, I, I didn't want to sign something that didn't feel right to me. It just, it didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was pissed because we were about to launch my channel and I had done so much, like a month and a half of, <sighs> working on videos, filming, editing. I was um, in the recording studio, recording all these songs, and I was, you know, It sounds to me, sorry, I started to interrupt you again, but it sounds to me like you, 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 they had, the, that you had something inside of that project that they wanted, okay? Again, this is why it's so predatory. And they waited to the moment where you didn't really have a choice except to sign, and I'm glad you didn't. It sounds like amazing for you. But what it sounds like is like, okay, there's a couple things here that these guys have seen that they want and they want to get it for the cheapest way possible and they don't want to pay you what you're owed and again that's on Shay I don't care what who's working under Shay it's Shay that's him who does that it could be that it could could definitely be that it could also be they're naive and there's this guy doesn't know how to run the com- this music portion of the company so he's going to take the exact contract he signed cuz mm-hmm. someone else gave it to him and he's just going to forward it along i i honestly think that's more what it is okay um I feel like there is a lot of predatory stuff with Shay, but I don't know if that is. It could be, it could not be with that specific. But you said he talked to um, you about it. Well, I posted online. I'm like, I'm so sorry, guys, because, you know, the I felt accountable to these people who were, like, excited with me. I was sharing this process. I was vlogging oh. about it. So you walked, so you so- went to the meeting. You said, I'm not going to sign it. You walked out of that meeting. How did the meeting end then? Did they said, okay, we're done? No, he didn't say we're done, but I... Uh, I don't even know how it, it ended. I just told him I wasn't signing it. Okay. And then um, I went online because I was like, sorry, guys, I felt accountable to my audience. And I was like, I know we've been, um, I love connecting with my audience. And I feel like they're not just numbers. Like I love getting to know, I know a lot of the people who watch my videos and talk back and forth. And I've met up with some of them and become mm-hmm. friends. Um, so I felt accountable to them. And I was I was upset. I was disheartened. We were about to launch and I felt like I owed them an explanation. So I was like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I really want to post this stuff. And I know you guys are looking forward to it, but I just can't sign this contract. I'm sorry. I cannot sign it. Um, And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they'll change it or what will happen. You know, I have no idea, but Mm -hmm. I was just, we were about to launch that week. 
Um, so they wanted me to sign before we launched kind of thing. So I was, yeah, I was upset, but I wasn't like trying to like make, make her look bad. I was just trying to be accountable to my audience, like, and be mm-hmm. honest. And I also wanted, if other people were going to sign, I could shed some mm-hmm. of my knowledge to them and be like, just so you know what you're signing. Don't sign these shits. Just Don't so sign you them. know. Yep. Don't do it. Yeah. So I get this call from Shay and he is just livid with me. He's screaming at me, telling me to take it down. Like, can't believe you would do this to me type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I really messed up. Like, shit. Shit. Well, okay. That's why I'm telling you. That's why I'm telling you. This hit Shay. That is Shay at the top knowing what's in that contract, calling you after knowing what's in the contract. So there's no way he can go back on that. He didn't know what's in the contract. He He knew from me. Yeah. He knows. From my video. Yeah. So... It was just, I felt bad, but I was also pissed. I'm like, why should I have to sign my life away to have this opportunity? I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to sign away my rights to my songs. So I was upset. I didn't really trust him after that. And I was just kind of sickened, but I still wanted to be in this world. I still wanted to do YouTube Mm -hmm. and, you know, create videos. I just wanted to create for a living. Like, that's all I wanted to do. And he grace graciously gave me a nannying job and he was there. He was helping me, you know, oh, like I got to stop you because this is too many steps. So okay. contract doesn't go through uh-huh. and it doesn't right at this point. Your channel does not launch, right? It does not launch. So all is where is all that content now then? I, I think I said in my video, it's in like a external hard drive graveyard somewhere. So yeah. That you own or they own? They own. Even though you yeah, created I don't that have, stuff. I don't have access to it. That's no. bullshit. Okay. So. And they put my songs on iTunes through their channel. So they're collecting revenue and I get like a little percentage of it. You wrote the music, but you get a smaller percentage. Well, that was in the, that was in their contract, which I agreed to, if they're going to be producing all these things and they'll get 10% or 20% or whatever it was. So it makes sense, but they never released it back to me. Once the You're being too nice is what I'm trying to tell you. He then graciously F's you over on a contract, then gives you a job as a nanny. Now, like there's a step missing. So how much time passes? Then he calls you up and says, okay, I'll give you any job. That might be better than making create and creating music. I don't get no, that. No, I'm trying to remember how it all happened. I feel like he felt um, responsible for me a little bit because he convinced me uh, to move out yeah, there. Okay. He asked me to move yeah. out there. That makes sense. And like we both kind of cooled down from the whole contract thing and... I don't even know when. But it you're happened. just sitting here. It could have been. Now. It could have been three months. It, I think it was. It was within the first year of me living there. It was soon after. But okay. He would like be like, "Well, come over and watch the kids on on Saturday, you know, and I'll pay you money for that." And it was. I was like, "Oh, thank God, I can pay rent," you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did it on a little more of a consistent basis, but I just. I kind of wanted to start my own thing because I'm like, "Ooh, I don't know if I can trust this guy." Like mm-hmm. he wanted me to come out here and did this whole thing and it just gave me a really bad feeling like my whole family was worried for me and they're like oh i don't know if i trust this guy after this and it was just it was tough because i it was shay carl at that point mm-hmm. i'm like he knows he's connecting me with a lot of people and you just kind of have to you know i hear you you have he, there's a power yeah. dynamic here there is what, a power what dynamic. a lot of people are missing and a lot of people will diminish your story because not anything really happened it's a power dynamic that we need to address because this happens too often and too many women fall silent because of the power dynamic right. and they use the power dynamic to to take advantage of you yeah. that is i mean a teacher can't do that to a student um if you're in a position of power over people in certain industries it is sexual harassment no matter what it is completely what happened here that is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing through it all. You are how you're just out of college. You're young. You're you're driven. You're ambitious. You're talented. And you're you. He, this guy has all. He's holding literally your life by strings. And that's the feeling I didn't like. So I wanted to feel empowered. And so I got a job. I just took the first job I could find and nannied. Started nannying, and then I started. That wasn't going to pay the bills, so I started doing private music lessons and I was doing my own YouTube channel. It was making like 60 bucks a month. So. <laughs> Starbucks, Starbucks money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, it was a struggle. It was a mm-hmm. big struggle, but, and on top of working full time, I'm trying to produce and write music and post videos. Yep. And you, you know, the editing that goes into oh, that yeah. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So all my hours were spent just surviving and trying to build my channel and 
um, I ended up signing with a competing uh, YouTube, not, what are they M called? MCN, multi-channel yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. So I signed with another one and then I did some collaborations and stuff there and, um, but it wasn't Maker Studios, you know, Maker Studios had the, the facilities and the manpower and it was huge. And the know? connections, the, and the massive connections. connections. Yeah. So I turned down an opportunity that a lot of people were like, why the hell did you turn that down? That was so dumb. But I'm happy today that I feel like I did the right thing for myself and protecting myself. And it's sad because that would have been such a good opportunity to continue working with Maker Studios and building my channel. And I would have had a lot more collaborations. And Well, in hindsight, though, Maker Studios got sold and shelved. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been like sure. you might have been there for a few years. For a couple years. You'd have, yeah. you'd have been shelved. And yeah. then Disney would have owned your shit. So yeah, that's probably even worse off because you can't go out. There's no way if Disney owns your contract, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. Moving along, you're nannying, you're doing this other thing, you're content. Then how does it, how do you end up back in the circle? Like what happens next? Well, I kind of always was in the circle. Like if they went out for dinner, I would babysit sometimes. And, um, what's it? Okay. Sorry. What's the dynamic like behind the scenes at the Shade Carl house? Was it the same as on screen? Um, it's, it's more peaceful actually than on the screen. I was expecting them to always be like running around and like, yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty to be, to be fair. It's pretty much the same. It's just not as like, cause when he turns the camera on, he's like, okay guys, we're recording. Let's get ready. You know, that's the, so okay, that's really, I want to dive into that for a second. Cause that's really interesting yeah. to me. Are yeah. those kids conditioned to when he says, okay guys, we're recording. They're just to get up and do it. Is it all written beforehand? What, get up, but work? I think he's just trying to like warn them like, Hey, you're about to be on camera just so you know, kind of thing, okay. you know? Okay. And even for me, he'd be like, okay, so, you know, guys, we're getting ready. And you know, you, you kind of per perk up like, I'm perked up right now. Like if I was sitting here drinking a coffee, I'd probably be scratching my butt and like <laughs> resting bitch face, you know, like, yeah. I think that's normal. I think that's no uh, normal. It's not like, you know, March children, you know, everything's going think. along and along and along. How yeah. are you connected up to the point of the big fallout with the, with this cam girl? What happens? Um, I mean, I was kind of connected with them and friends with them. And I'd like go hang out with Carly sometimes and, I would go out to dinner with them or whatever. And cause I would go watch their kids and then I'd be in their videos because I was at their house and that kind of thing. So I still connected here and there. You and get paid to be in their videos though. You didn't get paid. No, no, no. Um, I considered them good friends and I got to meet his family and um, they at some point moved to Idaho. Okay. So before Idaho, I um, watch the kids one night and then I write a song with one of the kids just playing around mm -hmm. like we should write a song together. Why not? And then we play it for Shay and Colette when they get home and they, Shay was like, oh, this is really good. So he's like, let's record it and make a music video. And I'm like, sweet. That'll be fun. Yeah. I didn't I didn't really think much of it. I was like, yeah, why not? Um, so I had um, I had his daughter come over to my house and record the song. And she was so sweet. We went out to Froyo. It's fun. It's like a little girl date. And she was so cute. Yep. Um, and she's she's a very talented singer, very like good songwriter. She helped with the lyrics and we like really collaborated on this song. Then we went into Maker Studios and recorded the music video. It blew up, like really blew up. I What's the song this, called? Um, Forever Love. What's by by who? It's on the Shaytards. So you were in this video, it's got 11.8 million views and just that's a you know how many how much money you make on 11 million views <laughs> like that's yeah, a, don't even that's a know lot of money day. yeah that's only it's four minute song but it's yeah. again it's there's a song okay so this this song blows up then what happens well okay so the song blows up and um i get a big paycheck and it's so exciting i get to go to vidcon and perform it that year with mm -hmm. his daughter and like it's just a really exciting time um and you know all the the maker stuff is in the past like i'm like i can i i feel like shay's like trying to help me and has his heart in the right place and it was kind of cool um as friends with them to like have something you know just exciting just exciting yep. so um okay yeah i like hung out with them at vidcon and 
Yeah, this was a long time ago too. What year was that? Does it say on there? 2014. 14, yeah. So. And I'm looking at the video just so if you guys are wondering, and I'm reading the comments, and people are like, straight, get off the internet. Shame on you. I stand with uh, Dana. And there's people like commenting on the video. Really? Videos. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's wow. just recently because you got, because people are starting, I mean, people, he literally got away with everything. And you were a secret until what, two days ago? Yeah. And he just, is he just walking around going on his podcast talking about how this is it? I mean, there's way more than you. There is. And I'm, I know that we know one, one person that doesn't want to speak out. That's their story right. to tell. But if there's two more on top of the other one, you know, there's more, yeah. you know, how, how often did Shay Carl travel by himself? Often. Yeah, often enough. Yeah, often enough. Exactly. And you have his yeah. own apartment in LA. All I'm saying is really. Like, Shay Carl, you think any of us believe anything you have to say? Sorry, sorry. I'm pissed. So that I'm goes on. I'm sad, though, because I did believe, I did believe in, well, when you're, it's easy to look uh, as an onlooker to say whatever. Mm -hmm. When you love their family and you're, you feel like you're a part of their family almost, because um, I would drive through to see my family and visit them along the way. And he'd be like, hey, come, we're celebrating New Year's, whatever. Come on, stop, stop on by and mm -hmm. whatever. So, um, they felt like family to me, like friends and family. And, and to a lot of people, like they have still to this day, a lot of the people, like, I have got trolls that come in, people that even follow me who like, who don't like family vlogging, like they are nostalgic to a lot of people because they were the yeah. first, but they did this before any of this conversation of child exploitation was even, right. It, it, this this child exploitation conversation's only been two and a half years. And I'm, right? I'm, so this was normal back in the day. I want to learn more about it too, because I just noticed like I've shared, you know, little clips from the people I nanny or whatever in my vlogs, like not even thinking twice about it. Mm -hmm. um, I did ask the people first if they, I asked the parents, like, do you mind if your kids are in this and ask the kid, do you want to be in the video? And they're like, oh yeah, that's exciting. I mean, there's so, a, there's a obviously a difference. And uh, my, my whole, my whole thing, and I know this is off topic, but it's just like, if you need your kids to make money, if they are the main source of your income, yeah. if you can't do that without them, if they are, if the, if the responsibility and the weight of the family's expenses are on their shoulders, that's wrong. Right, in and out, passing. That's I don't have a I have a problem mm -hmm. showing off a kid's talent. I don't even have a problem with that. Like even the video of you singing together, I have no problem with that. It's mm -hmm. that when the kids are the money maker. If you could oh, do your channel yeah. without your kids, then you, and you can't. And the, the, the advertising will give you more money if you use your children. Again, taking your kids to the hospital, showing your daughter's first period, shaving her legs, um, showing the that the dentist. If mm -hmm. you saw the behind the scenes of like, See, I don't watch that crazy. stuff, so I have I no idea. It's nuts. I have no idea. These videos of these kids getting their teeth out. Why do they? Why do those get the most videos? Because predators Ooh. are watching the kids' mouths. It's nasty, right? That is nasty. And that's why Shaytard's kind of like, they, they were over and done with before I came into the scene. And now I'm kind of just hashing out the old way because they were the OGs, man. They would, yeah. they literally set the direction of family vlogging from the point that they started. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I would love back. to learn more about that personally. Oh, like yeah. Any yeah. day, I'll tell you anything oh, you need to know okay. about it. So get back to the story. You're, everything's going good at Maker. You're doing some music. Everything's happy. Then what? Everything's great. Yeah. So, um, and I hear obviously through friends that, um, Shay was texting with a cam girl. That's what I heard. I don't even, I haven't looked any, or I looked up something at that point, but I haven't delved into the tech. I don't want to. Don't I look don't. at it. It's nasty. I don't want to see it. I need to call this out too, because something I, I missed on the it. podcast is that he said it was like on one night of drunken texting, but it was months was wasn't it? it? That's it was what I months heard. That's of what him I texting heard. this woman. So it wasn't, yeah. were you drunk for months well, on end? Like, it's not like, oh, I'm just texting a girl. It's like, I'm paying a girl for money or for sex? Is I don't think he was, is? though. I don't oh. think he was paying her. Oh, okay. Something happened, and I don't know the rest of the story. And I guess I'll dive into it because it's it's a story in it to itself. But oh. it was it was if not weeks, months that he was doing this. So he again, the diminishment that they did on the podcast is so insane. Mm. And again, we can hash that out all day long. But then you come into the picture, so it changes the whole thing again. Right? It was, we'll get there. Cause you didn't know, you weren't really in his life full time at all. You were just passing through, this happened. This you didn't point. want to know and you just, whatever. Then we're, we're at the point where the whole shit goes down. You don't yeah. want to know about it. You don't want to read about it. You're just like, I don't want to be tainted by, cause I'm glad you yeah. did because you would have been tainted. <laughs> don't support him or against him. I don't, yeah. I'm neutral. I, I'm, you know, I'm Switzerland. I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some time goes by and then <laughs> a few minutes later, <laughs> he approaches me about like, he's like, Hey, I really want to relaunch my channel and we're going on vacation. Like I want you to edit my videos and it's daily vlogs. And it's just kind of 
for this vacation is what we agreed to. And so I kind of put my life on hold to, you know, like, I think it was like a month or something that we did daily vlogs and I edited the videos. I made yeah, really good like money doing it. Yeah, it looks like about three years ago is when they dropped off. When that okay. whole thing went down, they got off the internet. They didn't need the money anyway. And then they dro it dropped off and then they started coming back because like, he doesn't need money. I this guy's it was worth... like five years ago. Oh, maybe. Well, I'm looking at... Because I think they dropped off again after the thing with me. Oh, you're right. You're For right, a little right. while. Again, this guy doesn't need to be on the internet. They have more wealth than they'll ever know what to do with. And mm -hmm. They can't spend it all. It's impossible. For, like, I don't... He's not. He he just wants to be on because he's a narcissistic douchebag. Pay attention. Yeah. yeah, he wants that. He wants that. And he, again, it's all negative now. No one likes him anymore. You don't even go here, Shay Carl. Get out of here. You're <laughs> done here, bro. I don't get it. It's so weird to me. And Colette's just stuck stuck by him. So that's you don't know what's going on in the back end. He calls you back and says, "I need you to help me come edit videos again." And this is all um, virtual. So he sends me footage. I edit and yep. upload and make a thumbnail and uh, do mm -hmm. that thing for him. Yep. Um. Everything is great and I am my heart's in it like yay I want them to succeed I want them to have a comeback I want that to be in the past and behind them and these are my friends it's mm -hmm. like you know mm -hmm. I, I want to help them out and I'm excited for them and um, I'm working real long hours editing these videos I was putting like music in it and like fun transitions and like doing all sorts of crazy stuff like really playing around with it and he seemed to like it. The audience seemed to like it. Like I'm, I'm over here spending five to ten hours a day editing these things. Yeah, wow, that's, um, that's a lot of work. And they're sending you. And again, it's. To, it, uh, for, <laughs> I'm so glad he didn't send you because anybody worth their YouTube salt these days, if you hire an editor, they're signing an NDA before they get any footage because really? there's stuff that in behind the scenes that you don't want to yeah, see. Uh, and and NDAs are yeah. like going to keep you silent from exposing the truth. Like the Ace Family, one of the biggest ones, they had one where they, he got really super angry at Catherine and swore and everything, but it wasn't supposed to be in there. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that you don't see that keeps recording. Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds like the Shakespeare probably worked, didn't have a lot of that. They did not. I did work with a family where there was some behind the scenes where like, oh girl, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was so bad. I've I've edited for two family vloggers, and Shay was the good one okay. in that scenario. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you see. This is this is what makes this so important because you're being super honest. You're giving yeah. credit where his credit is due, even yep. though this yep. guy's this guy's kind of like a dickweed. The douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> then what happens? Um, they move back home and they're like, "Let's do this. Let's let's continue working together." Because I was like, "Well, this could just be for a month. This is just a gig for me at this point." Mm -hmm. But he's like, and he's, um, he's like, move to Idaho. We're going to get a, like a production house. And he has some other friends who, um, we're going to film and stuff. And I ended up meeting them. They did do the video, the music video, um, eventually for that. Mm -hmm. So he like, move up to Idaho and we'll continue working. We'll do three to four videos a week. And we're going to do a Christmas album for the kids. So we'll do 12 songs. And I'm like, that's, a, that's ambitious, but yeah. I, I'm down. I'm going to have to bring my brother with me to help with the editing. And he's really freaking good musician, like better music musician than I'll ever be in my whole okay. life. But <laughs> and yeah, he probably didn't even go to the school you went to. He didn't. He's just <laughs> self-taught. So annoying. Me and my brother who are, we're living together in LA and I'd been in LA about seven years at this point. We uproot our whole life. I give all my students away. We pack up our apartment. My dad drives down from Montana to Los Angeles. Um, helps us pack, moves us up to Idaho. You know, everything's buzzing, feels great, seems great. We have a few meetings like, okay, here we go. We're gonna mm -hmm. do this album. Yeah, we're gonna do three to four video vlogs a week. And I'm I'm editing those and doing the music. And so. writing a 12 record album. Yeah. <laughs> Ambitious, but that's, I'm uh, that's a little not, crazy. Write, not necessarily writing it, but doing covers is a little oh, easier. So you don't have to write song, but my... writing a couple yeah. songs, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's okay, you're right. Okay, so, but still ambitious, still a lot of work. Still a lot of work with the behind the scenes. Uh, and are you doing this at Maker Studios or is it after Maker Studios was sold? After. Okay. I think it was sold by then. It was definitely after they they were moved back to Pocatello. Yeah, I think they yeah, sold Yeah, and they made their yeah. millions and millions and millions. He's got a studio at his house yeah. and you're well, working there. I remember recording in his barn. So it's not in his. What happened? Someone Hello just, to you. Someone um, just do a backflip and some chairs? <laughs> yeah. I think I brought my studio and set it up in his barn, but he had kind of like a area in there. Oh, they had their tricks and stuff set up in there too. Yeah. So their clothing line. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it was like a professional, this is where work is and this is where home is. And that was 
probably comfortable for Colette and the family, comfortable for me, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, cool. I don't have to like, you know, intrude in on their family, like dinner. Oh, they can just go up to the barn and do the work I need to do. I can, I did most of the work from my house though, too, because he would send me footage. I would edit oh, a yeah. big thing for me. I could pay off all my student debt. I'm, I get to give my brother a job. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Sorry. It just like fucked up my brother's life and my life for a long time. I know because it's your brother's story to tell, but it's hitting you really hard because you, it sounds like you made promises to your brother based on your history and everything else and knowing that. And based yeah, on is, what you know, it's going to go projected big. to make. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you're, you're like excited for your brother. And then I think the, the most heartbreaking thing is that you let your brother down without, without want, like inadvertently, you didn't want to, and it did. And so Shay Carl's Absolutely. up here in his million trillion dollar mansion in the hills while these people are struggling to get by, coming to the, and then they get f over while he still gets to live in his millions and millions and millions of dollars, money yeah. he'll never be able to spend in his entire lifetime. And he just gets to get away with this shit, man. It's yeah. so bad. It's gross. And to title their video, Shay loses everything. I'm like, no, your oh. kids and your wife lost everything and your family and the well, people around dignity. you. You didn't they lost dignity. Shit. Shay lost all his dignity, but his family took the hit of all because he yeah. to get up there and say what he said. It's Colette that lost all the dignity. Like I don't even know Shay Carl's kids. I've never seen any of the videos, so I don't know what kind of skin in the game they have. But Colette made herself look like a fool by not speaking out when she had a chance to to and then even ask her any questions about it. So, like yeah. if you guys are wondering what's going, we're talking about the really, interview. Yeah, it's I like, only watched a little of it. I couldn't sit. There oh, it's long bullshit. Enough. The whole thing was like, okay. look how we're so good. They literally jerked each other off for like two yeah. hours. It was nuts. And then the I, wives would just chime in that. once in a while. They just chimed in once in a blue moon. And I know Colette to me. Now we'll get to that in a second. Um, because I keep my ADHD brain sucks with this. But so your brother and you guys are working. What happens? They s stop vlogging for and i didn't know why like they're like sorry we don't have any videos this week um i'll try and get you something um so the the two to three videos that i was promised weren't coming in but i was working on the albums i was getting like i was laying production tracks getting them ready for kids to sing over and um we we're just working hard on that like we we're just working hard we knew we had a lot of work to do so even though videos weren't coming in consistently um or as consistently as they said, um, we were still getting a couple a week or something. But, were you getting um, paid for the production of the record or were you going to get paid when it came out? When it came out. So kind of how we did it is we just split um, the audio income from like iTunes, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, not YouTube. Not YouTube. Oh my God. He took, he took you for a ride because his, he took you for a ride. Again, he did it and he knows because he just or he was or he didn't know and he was being aloof about it But I highly doubt it. Anyway, didn't either way. Anywhere, I right? made a shit ton of money off that song oh, for, you did, for yeah. me for me for it The was first a lot. song you did but the yeah, record didn't did, the record didn't happen. Why it didn't happen? Well, they said we're sorry. We're not gonna do the record and then they also So one night they did tell me I think sorry with the records kind of off for now and I didn't they didn't really give me an explanation and I don't I guess I did need one, but I don't know. Something was going on behind the scenes. So Shay, Shay and I are friends. Like I'll go out to dinner with him and his family every once in a while. Like, and he was trying to set me up with Colette's brother. So he's like, well, um, Hey, what's up? He texts me, you know, um, in the evening at some point, it wasn't like super late, but it was like, this is time. after no more vlogs. And after the no record was put on hold, I was there for about a month or month between a month and a, Two months you moved your so. whole shit out there and they just it just it's i know i'm i'm just trying to understand this sounds like you're glossing it over a bit that's fine but it mm -hmm. just i would be so angry everything mm -hmm. well how are you paying your bills at this point um i mean i'm able to pay my bills well shay was picking up a big portion of the rent he's paying like 750 oh, right. towards rent because the house so, everybody was staying the at. house yeah. yeah 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 so i was like i can't afford a big five bedroom house he's like well i'll pay this much of it and then you pay the rest mm -hmm. and i'm like Okay, that works for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but my name had to be on the lease because um, that was just the rules of the, the housing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I can't think. So of it sounds like yeah. okay. It sounds like you're just a nice person, and you're like, oh, a little high. like you're you have you have rose colored glasses on, and it sounds like I'm you're not just like, kind oh, of person else. in general. Yeah, though, and so, so I would have been yeah. like, Barong, let's meet and fight. Like this is not going down the way that you're saying this is going down. I would be so upset. So yeah. anyway, he texts you and says, it's let's upsetting. go for dinner. I want to hook you up with Colette's brother. Maybe this is their way of saying, you know, welcome to the family. Whatever. Maybe they're trying to help you. I don't know, but they want to introduce yeah. you to Colette's brother, and right. you go so out for supper. I okay. go out, and they had just finished eating or having drinks or something. So they're about to leave. So I show up and then he's like, let's go over to Colette's brother's house for a little bit. I'm like, oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I guess. Okay. But in the parking lot on the way out of the restaurant, he pulls me aside and he's like really sad and he's mm -hmm. kind of drunk, you know, and he's like, I'm just so sorry. We haven't been getting you videos. Like I feel really bad and we've just been having some tough times. And as much as I understood that, like it was, pretty devastating at that point because I'm relying on those videos yeah. and that's, bills what are being paid. that's what I was yeah. told that I was going to get and that's what I signed up for when I moved my whole life to mm -hmm. Idaho mm -hmm. so and it wasn't just like but we're going to be getting more videos soon it was just like sorry this has happened it's kind of like a final thing it sounded like a final thing can I and can so, I just jump in here for a second it yeah. sounds like possibly something else came up and Colette was like, it sounds like someone might have been like, to be, on, be honest with me, do you think that there are women out there that have extorted Shay Carl? Okay, I'm going to answer I this. Don't know. Allegedly, yes. It. So this is what this is what it sounds like happened. Possibly the text message thing was over and done with for a couple of years. Something else happened. Someone was coming forward. They likely had to mitigate the disaster through lawyers or through money or whatever. Again, it's all alleged. And that's what happened this night because he shows up at your house drunk, kicked out on his ass. Yeah, yeah. He's kicked right? out. Kicked out of the house. That's what he says. He says he's kicked out. Colette won't let me in. So something like, went okay. down big. Something, something happened. And so you didn't meet her brother? What happened? I met her brother. Yeah, I was with um, Shay and his brother. And so I drove separately over to the, to his house and like they were just having a drink and I don't drink. So I was just kind of hanging out, but I felt so sick to my stomach. So I like, it was fun hanging out guys. I'm going to go. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to bed at nine. That's what I do. So. Yeah, yeah. That's me too. I'm I don't so drink tired. either. I, I mean, you're very similar. Like I don't, I've never really? partied. I've never drank on drugs yeah. in my entire life. I like, I'm more Mormon than any Mormon. I've Are met. you a Mormon? No, but I'm, I act You're more, more Mormon. Mormon than Mormons. Okay. I'm fa family oriented. I don't drink. I don't have tattoos. Yeah. I That's do crazy. I a lot though. <laughs> I love it. So, okay. So. so he, yeah, he, now this is good. When I was watching the story, you, he comes over to your house and he knocks and he texts you. Yes. And you've so, got receipts. That's all that everybody's asking. It's make sure you keep your receipts and I'm sure yeah, you have yeah. your receipts. Okay. So, um, but I have a screenshot of the call at the time in my heart. Yeah, you have a receipt. You know, I have somewhere. a receipt. I have a receipt of him calling or texting me that night. Okay. At a certain time. And it's late, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you and know that he's an alcoholic at this point? Like no. do you see that? He hides that pretty well from everybody, right? Well yeah, and I it's not not my business. Like yeah. I don't okay. care. Yeah. Um I'm kind of just a, like a free <laughs> like love everyone, yeah. <laughs> oblivious. It's, I need like a I man like in my life who's like will throw down. Because yeah. I'm like you know, <laughs> you need your, so. you need someone who's like uh, you're being dumb here. So yeah, that's, that's, can you just yeah. stop that, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can I hug you while I'm not at you? <laughs> uh, see, I have a hard time uh, standing up for myself. I've had a hard time in my mm -hmm. life because um, I want to love everybody. I want everyone to be happy and at peace. I can and see it. Yeah. Where were we? Okay, so he's at my door. I'm in my bedroom bawling because I just found out, like. I was already upset that we weren't getting videos, but I just kind of found out something's going on and I don't know when we're going to get videos slash get paid. Because you know? he said so something at the restaurant to, he was crying he about it and saying, sorry, yeah. we're not, and it wasn't like it's coming. It's like, we're done. And then yeah. that's, it it's, sounds to me like that's why you left. Well, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't say, he didn't say like, we're never giving you videos again, but it was like final. It wasn't like, but we're going to fix it. You mm -hmm. know, it was just kind of like, I'm so sorry this has happened. And he's very apologetic. And Some I, shit went down yeah. some shit went down that we'll never know about oh, because yeah. they likely and solved it through other avenues that's yeah. what happened okay got it mm -hmm. because yeah, colette yeah. likely said something no more happened. vlogs we're done with this shit something happened in that moment where they're not even gonna vlog anymore that that's very mm -hmm. sus to me what you said there i think i don't think you realized how big of what you just said right there that happened that night something happened and mm -hmm. we'll likely never know but that's mm -hmm. a big deal and they had stopped vlogging like a little bit before this couple of weeks or so mm -hmm. like it had slowed down quite a bit so i'm in my room just 
shaking and crying mm -hmm. and just like, how do I get out of this? Like, what did I get into? And just upset, you know, like, how am I going to pay my brother? How are we going to finish this album? And then I don't know if I found out before. I think I found out before that they weren't doing the album. So soon before that, that they weren't going to do bullshit. the album. So bullshit. So um, I let him in and I'm like, dude, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And he comes in and he's like talking to me. So I walk into the kitchen, which is on the opposite side of the house. And I just kind of go behind the kitchen bar and he's sitting at the bar. So we're kind of talking over the table. And my brother comes upstairs. He's like, what's going on? I can mm -hmm. see he's like in the corner of his eyes, like, what the hell is he here right now? Mm -hmm. um, but he's just sitting in the living room, like texting. I know he's listening. And, you know, that's why he's upstairs. He's yep. pretending he's there, like, he hey, knows that you need him to be there. Mm -hmm. That's what sounds like your brother knew. Mm -hmm. My brother's very wise, very mm -hmm. fucking wise. Um, so she, he was just you know, talking about like, she, or it's kind of reiterating, Colette kicked me out and um, I don't know what to do. I just like don't have anywhere to go. It's such a hard thing we're going through, like re-apologizing for the videos and stuff like that. And I like what you said um, in the video. You're like, but bro, you're worth like 40 million. Go I know. get a hotel. Go get a hotel. And Seriously. you can get the nicest hotel in the world. You can go stay in Dubai for the night if you want. Get law. Uh, this guy, again, that's why I know what he was. He was there for like, you know, skullduggery. That's what he was there for. He wasn't there to be like, I need a place to crash. Bro, get your credit card. Go somewhere else. And I was like, it was uncomfortable. Like, you don't want to hear about someone's marital problems. Like, mm -hmm. but he's, you know, he's been my friend. And I'm like, I kind of just wanted to be a, a listening ear. Like, sorry, man. Like, that sucks. <laughs> sorry you guys are going through that. You know, mm -hmm. sorry for her. Sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Um and then he's he just like kind of notices my brother back there and he's like can we talk in private i'm like okay what's going on and he's at the bar here and he just walks right into my bedroom which is right right there so i follow him in and when i get in the bedroom he's laying in my bed and he's like he's clearly um, inebriated too right you yeah, know he's drunk he's, like he's does he slur drunk. his words what does he do when he's well, drunk he's not like slurring his words but he's he's pretty drunk Okay. Um, like he's coherent. So he's laying in my bed and he's like, Oh, I love my wife so much, but I could sleep here next to you tonight. And I wouldn't something like this, you know, not, it's not verbatim, but I wouldn't even touch you. He's like, and then the problem is I've always been really attracted to you. So I don't know if I could control myself. Okay, so let me just, I gotta dissect this for a second because it's, you know, even though you are paraphrasing, okay, so in, right. it sounds like you remember it pretty clearly because that would be a devastating moment, right? This boss right. that has power over you oh, in God. every way. I remember I can stand right in that moment. I know yeah. exactly how yeah. it felt. So the he says, yeah. I could not do anything, but then the next phrase say, but I can't help it because I'm attracted to you. Mm -hmm. That's why when I go back to that moment where he's, grooming is not the word, but using his power to say, come on my team, young lady. You know, even though you are telling and did work, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying he maybe initially did think that, but this whole time he's probably had these thoughts about you, and he is now at a point where Colette's thrown him out because something big happened, and he's ready to throw it all away to be with mm -hmm. you. And he tested you, and again, you, you being you, now that I know, you know, you don't sign shitty contracts. You have you're mm -hmm. upstanding, and you're just, I you just. Imagine. I do not sleep with married men. Yeah, I don't it, you don't ruin that. people's families. It sounds no. like that's not something Absolutely that's in your in your repertoire, not. right? So, what happens? So after he says that, I I just like freeze. I feel uncomfortable. So um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Like, I want him to get the fuck out of my bed and out of my house. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be aggressive and say that because I don't want to piss him off or something. It's just so weird. Like, why are we so afraid to just say, get the fuck out of my house? I because don't know. He, but I'm frozen. No, I know exactly why. And everybody does, too. And this is why people are scared to talk about it or to bring it forward. Because he owned you. Yeah, not not in a way that's like you know, but he literally owned the purse strings. He had your livelihood in his hands. Mm -hmm. If you were to say get the f out of my house, you, you probably would have retaliated even more than he did. Yeah. So that's why you. Well, did and it. he had your, retaliated against me speaking out in the past with the Maker Studios. Exactly. Thing. So he there's really that did. like fear yep. of like, oh shit, he's gonna flip out if I and I I'll be on the street. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um. Or I'll still be in this house because my name's on the lease, but I don't know how to pay for it. It's like mm -hmm. twelve. 1250 a month plus utilities, you know, um, 
So it's, that's why it's understandable. I'm saying I'm not saying that yeah. you, a lot of people are like, well, you you could have just did this. In you hindsight, to, you put yourself in your shoes. I know, but in saying. hindsight, I'm like, oh god, who should just like, Ugh. should I kick wish I would have just kicked it. I know <laughs> that's what you want to do, but you can't. I know. And then um, I glance down at my phone because I see it light up and buzz, and my brother texts me, "Thank the fucking lord." Mm -hmm. Excuse my French, but thank God he was listening from the other room and texts, "This is sexual harassment." Literally text that verbatim. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I got those receipts. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, he texts that to me and I know he's listening. I know he's got my back. So I get a little more courage and I'm like, yes, this fucking is sexual harassment. This is yeah. gross. And I'm like, Shay, I'm going to, to uh, CrossFit with Colette in the morning. Do, should I tell her you were here tonight? Or like, what's that conversation supposed <laughs> to be like? <laughs> Because I wanted to also be like, remember, you have a wife and you're laying in my bed right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember that whole let person yeah. <laughs> that you've already screwed over like 10 times, probably. Yeah. yeah. Remember, remember that? Her? Yeah. Um, and then he kind of pop he pops up and is like sitting on the edge of the bed, kind of just rambling. He's like, I just don't know what to do. Like, it's a very poor me. Like, I'm the victim thing. Like, feel sorry for me. I'm so, I'm so low right now. Just I just wish I had a place to go. It's not verbatim. I'm like paraphrasing, I know, I know. obviously, but it's the, that sentiment and a sentiment of like, what was me? I've it's always so, what was me. Yeah. I've done so much for you. Like, it'd be nice. Like, if you could just help me out type of sentiment, you know, it's like this multimillionaire mm, sitting on your bed when mm -hmm. you don't have anything. It's irking me. He could do anything he wants. He could go buy a house now and live in it for yeah. the night if he wanted to. He's so wealthy and he's using, again, it's not about I need somewhere to go. He's trying to get, he's trying to go in your pants. That's it. That's right. all he was there for. That's it. Then he stands up and I'm like, Shay, I'll call you an Uber or cab or whatever they have in Pocatello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then he's like, no, 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 no. And then he comes at me, literally comes up to me and like he's going to kiss me or something. I'm like, and I, it turns into like an awkward Ooh. hug, like, Ooh, okay, you gotta hugs. go, you gotta go. Cringy awkward hugs. I can and see he, it too. I can Ooh. see he's like pissed at me and he like storms out and drives away. And I'm like, okay, Ooh. all right. I would like to say this for the record, what he did there and approached you and physically touched you in that moment, that is also assault. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It is unwanted attention and unwanted touching. The world has changed. What he did there let's take away the whole like even just propositioning you touching you in a moment where clearly your body language and tone was mm -hmm. not welcoming to it that's mm -hmm. that's consent as well when yeah. you don't consent either way he should not have touched you that's yeah. gross mm -hmm. so it's bad it it's felt bad gross it yeah. felt real fucking gross yeah and even i had already been bawling before he showed up because i was so upset because i'd been screwed over and then this mm -hmm. on top of it oh uh, <sighs> It sucks. And so he it leaves. Was the worst he leaves. Do you talk life. to your brother afterwards? What happens? Um, kind of. We're both kind of frozen in shock. I know we talked about it and I had already been so worked up. I'm like, I just need to sleep and go to bed. I can't even think about this right now. I'm so in shock mm -hmm. and panic and just survival mode. You know, like, how am I going to survive? How am I going to get out of this job and how, you know, emotionally I gotta, too. I got to tell like, you this. Ugh. I got to tell you this because so many people probably would have just done what they would have done, right? To, to do it. I got to tell you, like you were staring the face of something that could have been so big for you. And you just like your, your integrity no was intact. It didn't even come. It didn't way. even flutter through your brain. No way. Didn't even flutter through your brain. Never Good in for a you. million Good years. Good for you. Never in a million years. I mean, I'll make some dumb decisions with a single guy. <laughs> <laughs> but like not yeah. someone who's been my friend for 10 years i love his yeah. family i love his wife his kids good for you let's move on to the whole okay so afterwards days go but what happens after the days and days and days he end up back like he obviously ends up back at home because he just did this podcast yeah. and they're all they're all lovey-dovey now not knowing you're about to drop the, sh the freaking bomb that you're about to drop so yeah. what happens so instead of editing their videos which is what you're supposed to do and doing music with the kids I'm folding and ordering t-shirts and shipping them out to people. So that was a blow, but you know, I had to make money. Like I had to survive. So I, and my brother, he sat me down and he's so wise. And he's like, you need to ask Shay for money and we need to get out of here. And I was like, there's no way Shay is going to give me money. Like 
I was so afraid of him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there's, he's not going to give, like, what, he's going to give us like a thousand dollars. What do you mean? And I totally just gaslit my brother on Shay's <laughs> behalf. I totally did. I totally no, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. You're like, you don't, you feel like you don't want to extort. You feel like it's extortion. Right? Did you yeah. feel like you were doing something a little bit shady? I was like, I but don't, it wasn't shady. You were I don't owed feel it as okay a business, asking him for money. Yes, you but know? you were owed money as a business arrangement right. that you were coming out there for. It wasn't for him coming on your bed and farting in your pillow. He came I just in, wanted to get out of there. I, and so yeah. your brother was right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Your brother was right, and I get that. And he was trying mm-hmm. to say, no, there was a business arrangement that he didn't come right. clean on. And, he and was you probably had emails and everything me. to do it. I mm-hmm. can't just go stay in someone's basement and not have a job right now. I can't do that. I have a lot of debt and a lot of bills and... It's nuanced, um, and it sounds like you. It is. Are, it sounds like you. You. It sucks because it sounds like you might have hurt your brother. You guys had some kind of falling we out. We had but it's a nuanced. really hard time. We had yeah. a really tough time. That sucks. Thank God he had somewhere to go. Mm-hmm. He had somewhere to go where he was safe, and it mm-hmm. wasn't. It wasn't pretty because he dropped his whole life for a job opportunity as well. Okay. And so. Um, but let me bring this back. Sorry, full circle. All of this. What? Is Shay Carl's fault? Okay, none of it is your fault. None of it. Even though your brother and you might have had this disagreement, and it might have not been the way you should have handled it. But again, been in this bring position. it to its core. You should never been put in that position ever. Absolutely ever. not. Absolutely not. You need to know that. Yeah. Okay, so continue. Um, sorry. My brother and I were best friends, and I know we're like healing, and it feels good to heal. But there was no justice for my brother either. Mm-hmm. I'm like confident at this point. I'm tough. I, I've i learned to not put up with bullshit. Um, but to see my family hurting, like, is the worst. It's the worst thing. Yeah. I, I, think um, you bring, I think you're shouldering a lot of the blame you shouldn't be shouldering, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like you're putting okay. way too much on yourself when, at the, again, you're giving, this is what, you're, you're giving Colette vibes is what I'm getting here. You're allowing Shay Carl to be, he is the guy, he's the mastermind yeah. of all this shit and every, the wake of destruction well, behind him, then it's a ripple effect for everybody in their circumferences. That's not mm-hmm. cool. That's not well, cool. Well, the empathetic person, part of you that attracts these types of people. I spent Christmas alone that year oh. and it was, it was rough because I was hard. editing their, you know how they have a mega vlog at Christmas and Big money I was at Christmas editing for it family vloggers, all yeah. day. I was editing it, editing it all day. And um, after I uploaded, I collapsed and I thought I had a heart attack, but I was like. Panic attack. Panic attack. And I was just frozen. I couldn't move my body. And I was like, am I going to actually die? Like, I'm not being dramatic. I am a dramatic person. Oh, I know. Person. That's what a panic attack I'm is. I'm not a dramatic person. I am a dramatic person, but <laughs> I'm not being dramatic. I was laying there overnight for, like, almost 16 hours. I couldn't move my body. I was just like, I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Like, if I wake up from this, like, I have to figure out how to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, it's really That's hard a- to go back to that Take time. your time. I know. So, so traumatic. And this is, again, probably the reason why you kept silent us so long. Who wants to rehash this bullshit all the time? But what you're doing yeah. here is brave because hopefully it's going to empower the people to come forward and say, F this guy. There's these, yeah. like, you were owed more than just reparations for the, for, the sh- for the job he didn't get promise you, but for the shit he put you through. This is t- emotional turmoil. This is it, it, it Panic was. attacks are nothing to scoff at. I've had panic attacks, and it's the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. And I've had, and I've had like, kidney stones. So let's be real. <laughs> panic attacks are the worst thing that has ever happened to a lot of people. If anybody's had a true panic attack, it is like, I'm it's dying. It's frightening. It's You're frightening. dying. That's what you feel like. Well, and, this, and I, It comes yeah. from him. That's all that stress and everything it on is. you was put on your shoulders. He gets to go spend Christmas, fake Christmas with his family while you edit that shit. Bullshit. That was hard to watch on yeah. Christmas, them pretending to be the perfect family. It grossed me. I think that's what triggered it. I was like, I have to sit here and edit you guys looking like the perfect family. And I have to gaslight the world on your behalf. Like, yeah and it you didn't tell Colette worse. you didn't tell Dang. Colette until oh, later on my life and you huh? didn't tell Colette till later on no I um so what happened was I I made a decision I need to figure out how to get here I was still showing up to work I was up you know working for Trixon and doing that whole thing damn um but I did talk to one of 
Hey. Holy shit, that's that's yeah, a sign right there. Rain. Watch out, shit, girl. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> I um I talked to one of Shay's good friends and tell I just open up to him. I I don't know if he's gonna believe me, but I open up to him. I tell him, and he was pissed. Mm -hmm. He good. was fucking pissed on my behalf, and it, that was justice in itself. I'm like, okay. Well, let's break that apart. What that looks like to me is that his best friend or his close friend knows all of his in whatever indiscretions, but didn't know about this indiscretion is like, he okay, this know. guy, he probably knew him about multiple indiscretions and finally says, you know, Shay's been lying to me now. He's like, oh, I'm done with all this oh. stuff. And then you come forward and tell this to his good friend. He's like, that's why that guy's pissed. He is now being like, I can't stick up for this guy anymore. Yeah. So. And he was like, dude, just ask for like, he didn't say sue him, but he's like, ask, I know Shay. Mm -hmm. Ask him for money and he'll give it to you. I'm like, yeah. no, he won't. And he's like, yes, if he you're will. <laughs> telling the truth, yeah, which I believe you are, and which I fucking absolutely was. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm like getting rained on. Oh, sorry. Do you want to go somewhere else? So Dan just had to go inside because it was raining. Everybody just so you're aware <laughs> why she's like miraculously just vanished into another spot. But she's inside of a coffee shop, so please forgive the background noise. Anyway, continue, please. So. Um, I get the confidence to actually ask Shay for severance. And this guy's like, ask for $100,000. Like, fuck this guy. Yeah. He was, it felt so good to have a friend of his take my side and mm -hmm. believe me. And it felt so good for a man to stand up for me. Like, I don't know why that feels so good, but it does. Like, every time I get messages in my um, inbox and it's from a man which just doesn't happen that often i'm like dude thank you so much for standing up for what's right and it's mm -hmm. really nice so i felt really um confident in asking for severance pay at this point okay and then my brother's like dude i told you to do that from the beginning and i'm like <laughs> yeah. oh, i know <laughs> Ugh, i mean it so sounds like it sounds like you needed to get up your gumption so it couldn't you do, couldn't do the next day but you needed to get the gumption up later it. on it makes sense yeah. you let this stew in your brain you panic attacks all the shit was going on yeah. i get it you gotta well when you gotta someone sit with knows shit. shay too and knows his personality yeah. is saying he will give it to you yeah yeah so um i calculated what i should have made in the next six months and that's what i asked for okay and I think I asked for a little more for like moving costs or something. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be fair. I'm like, I know he's a millionaire. I don't, I'm not going to be like asking him for millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. I just want what I would have, should have got paid and what I was going to stay there working for for the next six months so I could pay. Yeah. You were owed this, by the way, not only and that and more. So I think it was very fair. And so what happens? He instantly he, oh dude he called me so fast and he's like okay you, i'll give it to I, you you're not gonna read it here but go to her video everybody and she reads the letter that she sent him okay and like he calls her like 38 seconds after she sends it so if yeah. it, it's again in a court of law it's not a legal admission of guilt but it's admission of guilt why oh, is he, he so knows. quick to Who's pay gonna you give you money if you're lying about yeah. that like i i outlined like this is the job stuff you didn't um own up to mm -hmm. like this is what I moved out here for. And then this is what happened on that night yep. in November. So he, um, I send a letter, he calls me and then I get a call from Colette. It was a little while later. Yeah. I think it was the same day though. She calls me and she's like, I'm Dana. I'm so sorry. We didn't come up with enough videos for you. And I feel really bad. We're just having a hard time. And she was so empathetic and so lovely. And, just i could tell she really felt bad that you know that whole thing was kind of falling through and they yeah. weren't getting me content and i was like oh she don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> because what was the time period between shay doing that to you and then you telling colette well how I, long did it go how long did it till until she found out it was the same day wait you told he, colette the same day no because he on this conversation no oh i see what you're saying here's a here's the timeline so i write the letter send it to shay shay calls me and then he must have talked to Colette like, oh, Dan is leaving because we didn't get her enough videos. That must have been what he said to her because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Because when she called me, she was very apologetic saying, sorry, we didn't get you enough videos. Like, we'll help you get out of here and like give you money to get out of here. Like, help yep. you get out of here. That's yep. kind of what it means. I'm like, damn straight you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you tell her the um, next, you tell her and you're like, so no, like you I don't said, know what happened. No, I said, well, did you read the the letter I sent to Shay. She's like, no, I didn't. 
And I wasn't going to give her a chance to talk to Shay and be like, well, tell Shay to give it to you. Fuck no. I was yeah. like, give me your email, girlfriend. <laughs> I'm sending it to you. I'm sending it to right you directly. Now. Yeah. So I sent it to her, and I've never heard a word from her since. And here is it again of the story that we know. We know that Shay Carl did all this stuff. Uh, uh, everybody says on again when I when I alluded to the podcast that the, when Colette was sitting in the back and they didn't ask her and she didn't speak up or anything else, Colette lost her dignity to me. Colette is the victim. Yes. Yeah. Right now though, Colette's not the victim. Well, she's the victim, she's but you're the victim. She's enabling. She's enabling him. So you hear this for a second. This is so dangerous because it's all about money. If your husband has done this multiple times and it sounds like we have at least two two exact proofs and more, if people will speak up, it's probably more like three to uh, 20, okay? Again, she there's no way she doesn't know because you told her the second time. And they she go on this knew. podcast, what, two she years knew. later? How long has it been, two years since That's this happened? That's what was so disheartening to me is, I mean, I expected Shay to do something like that, but I didn't expect Colette to back him up and be like, yeah, that's all he's ever done. Because it sounds like she's it's, just used to this. She uh, yeah. she chose she chose again. It's so sad for her because she chose this. It feels like Colette doesn't feel like she's worth it to anybody else. Like she's not like this is as good as it gets for her. I That's don't bullshit. Think, I don't know. I think it's the religion. I think she's uh, so yeah. dedicated to their life after death and to their kingdom. She's so they so are die hard Mormons. Her faith. They are die hard Mormons. She's so committed to her faith that uh, whatever obstacle she has in this life, I I believe. Mm -hmm. is my you know well opinion. you would know more than a lot of people but i feel like she's such a faithful woman because in the mormon religion the woman answers to the man and the mm -hmm. man answers to god but mm -hmm. what happens when the woman's answering to an ungodly man nothing it doesn't matter because the women are nothing in mormon religion i can tell you i can talk all day about the bullshit that mormon is okay mormonism is one of the most patriarchal, old school, like, it's, like, Dude, I men can have multiple Utah wives. Men can have multiple, if your wife dies and then you get married, you get both those ladies in the afterlife, right? They talk, their, their afterlife planets are the most important things to them. So it really does make a lot of sense what you're saying here. I didn't know they were that diehard, but this sounds like they are that diehard. She has the purest heart of anyone I've ever met, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, but she has this belief that she's supposed to answer to Shay. That's her belief. But even the Book of Mormon wouldn't say answer to Shay if Shay's being a twat. The Book of Mormon does not say if your husband's cheating on Forgive. you. All Forgive good. Them. Yeah, but so, so, yeah, you, no, I even think the Book of Mormon will even say that that's a divorceable offense. Really? I think the Book of Mormon, like the Bible says, divorceable mm -hmm. offense. If your husband or wife steps out on you in any way, not even just sexually, in anything that comes mm -hmm. over top of them, like an addiction, whatever, that is grounds for divorce. And the Book of Mormon, I'm pretty sure Mormons divorce mm -hmm. all the time. So she just sounds like she is so invested in this afterlife situation or the money means more. I mean, she could take him for all his worth, but it sounds like she just doesn't want to deal with they it. Both That's so that. crazy. That's well, crazy. Okay. And coming from... I feel like she's a very empathetic soul, very empathetic person. She doesn't want to separate her family. She loves her kids so mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. too. She doesn't want to separate her family and have them go through that. And she maybe she's staying for her kids. I don't know. But Colette but has a very pure heart. She how really old are her does. kids now? How old are the kids now? Um, I don't know because I blocked him on everything. I haven't paid attention. But so they're when, in their teens, late teens. Uh, I think, yeah, I think... Um, the oldest one graduated high school yeah. and they're kind of trickling down from there. Yeah. Right. But here's the thing. Like she doesn't want to split her family, but so what she's just going to tell her daughters that this is oh, if your husband cheats on you. Oh, well, are you really want that for your yeah, daughter? I'm, you want I'm, that for your daughter. It's sad for the kids. That's bullshit. That's she's doing her daughter example. injustice. She is. That's, she is. That's and her sons. Yeah, and, and her, her sons. Exactly. Because she's it, like, oh, that's, yep. they learn that they are above a woman and yep. priority and they can get away with stuff like that. Of all the things, again, it, Colette here, I know she's the victim, yes, but at the yeah. same time, she has an opportunity here to be like, F this. Because, again, going back to the night that this all happened, it sounds like something else happened. And it sounds like something else has happened over and over and over again. He's not learning his lesson, and he's just blaming alcohol, and he's relying on the Mormonism to say, well, I mean, here's the thing. If someone cheats on you and you let them get away with it, you think they're not going to do it again? Like they've already yeah. experienced it. They've already gone through the, the whole shame of it all. Now it's just easier. There's yeah. no way he doesn't do it more. There's yeah. so many times that he's done this and it's just all going to come forward. And thank you for telling your story because it's what you've done here is you're just exposing for me anyway. And what I do on this channel is exposing how fake this bullshit is. All these kids live in these worlds without their consent. 
and they have to deal with the, uh, the fallout, even though they didn't consent to any of it. They have to deal with the fallout that everybody knows every little bit of their, their parents' business and their business mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. That's bullshit. Yeah. So. Yeah, and they don't, of course, they're not old enough to give consent because. Exactly. So, yeah. I'm sorry I'm angry. So, he then calls you back after you tell Colette because you know she found out because then he calls you back. So, you know, yeah, she and I don't remember if this was a text or a call or an email, but I know he reached out to me saying that he wasn't going to pay me because I had told Colette. He didn't say because of that, but I had just told yeah. Colette. And then he's like, I'm sorry, we don't have the money now. <laughs> I'm like, off. well, you told me a day and a half or two days ago that you had the money. So you need to honor that. And finally, and he eventually did, but he was pissed. And oh, I nice. didn't think he was be like warm and fuzzy about me give, sending it to Colette. But I would, if I was married to someone and they sexually harassed someone else, I would want to know. And I would protect that woman. Oh my gosh. I this would protect that woman. The issue is, and hear it out. He never denied it to you, to his wife, in an email or text or anything. No, never denied no, it. No, no. Never he denied deny it. it. Because, again, it happened and he just thought, I don't know what he, what he thinks. Why Why does he think you were silent for all these years? Because he knew that you were a nice person? I don't get Maybe it. Maybe because he paid me and he thought that was... Well, he has like, bad lawyers then. I don't know. Because you didn't sign an NDA, which is... Hell no. Actually, that's what all these YouTubers do, sleep with all these women. They get them to sign non-disclosure agreements, pay them a few hundred thousand or a few tens of thousands of dollars, and they walk away, and they're safe because they can't whistleblow because they'll be sued f for all the money in their w in their worlds. Even mm -hmm. though it has more lasting damage to the person that they're whistleblowing on, it also screws them. Even if yeah. they win, they still get screwed. Non-disclosure yeah. agreements should not exist in sexual harassment. Anything mm -hmm. to do with sex or people working over other people and yeah, taking anything true. with like the flesh should never be in a non-disclosure agreement. I'm sorry. Never. So so he says no, then you say what happens? What happens? How do you get the money? Um, he sends it to me in just a couple payments. Um, but it happens pretty quick, within a week or two. No, but he said, no, I'm not going to give you the money. Then you said what? Oh, and then I, I just kind of like, well, you said you had it a couple days ago, so what's changed? Which I obviously knew, because I said that to collect. So but I'm like, yeah. you already agreed to it, dude. Like, no. Mm-hmm. So he ended up paying me in payments, and mm -hmm. then um, I ugly cried. I got, I, I packed up my stuff in a U-Haul and ugly cried all the way to Utah. I didn't have anywhere. Like sometimes you can stay with family, you know, um, or I would have just gone back to my job and my life in LA. But I didn't have a thing to go back to. I was starting from scratch. Like I went from running my own business as a music teacher to folding a guy's underwear as his assistant. Like it was, it fucking wrecked me, dude. It wrecked me for a while. Yeah. And this guy and, just gets to, again, live in his high life on his ski hill in his million dollar mansion while everybody gets ruined and he just gets to walk away scot free. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. That's why the title of that that uh, podcast sickened me. It's like, yeah. Shay Carl loses everything. No, I lost everything because of Shay Carl. And How people in your you circumference lost everything. There's people, yeah. everybody lost. He didn't lose anything. No. The only thing he lost, I lost was like. I lost his, everything. My brother what lost What he lost everything. was his lovable demeanor on the internet. Everybody loves Shay Carl. He's just a fat, yeah. funny guy. Hey, hey, love Shay Carl. Now he's a complete asshole and he's being outed for being an asshole. And he's just, he, that's. He's mourning that. Isn't he's that crazy? That. That's, that's what he cares about the most is that he lost everything. And the, everything was his like, who he was. Whoever someone saw him as. What a prick. Yeah. He deserves everything coming his way, okay? I don't care. You, like, know, you know what, Chick Carl and Colette, if you're listening to this and you are, let me just tell you a little something. Enjoy the outer darkness, you Mormon assholes, because that's exactly where you're heading. You are the worst of the worst type of people. If you believe what the Book of Mormon says and you are trying to follow its parameters and everything it's done, you have done the shittiest thing to people. You've lied, you've consumed alcohol, you've hurt people, and you think you're going to end up in like an upper planet? You're not. You're going to be a TK smoothie floating in the outer darkness and you deserve it. Sorry, I said the thing. The Maya, Josh. Yeah. So, again, you, if you want to, if you want to come out of Mormon, and you want to just like if they're doing this and they're using the religion, the only thing that they really have is they're if they're landing on all the stuff because they believe it, then you got to throw it back in their face because they don't get to, they don't get, they don't get to enjoy being free of, and of all the shit that they did and get into heaven. Okay, mm -hmm. they don't. They have to reconcile all that shit. And if they haven't yeah. gone to their bishop and done all that shit, I'm I'm sure they haven't. Because yeah. there's just no way. This guy is not who he says he is. And they He's don't not. believe what the Book of Mormon says if they continue to live in this absorbent, gross, wealthy, 
mere materialistic lifestyle. It's not even what the Book of Mormon says you should be doing. It's a lie. Sorry. Anyway. I'm sorry, dude. I just wanted to say one thing about um, Colette. I kind of watched a part of her interview, and you saw the whole thing and commented on it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but she was saying, I'm happy this happened because there's no, been so much Shay growth. Said that. Shay said Shay that. Said that. Shay said, "Where you? Because know, they didn't ask her this. This is what pissed me off." He said, yeah. "You know, this everything happens for a reason." And then he everything said something like, it. "Then he said something like this." He said, "You know, we could make content about getting over this." He literally said, "We can use this as content to show people how to get over this." I kid you not. And of course, they don't show Colette on the camera when he says some shit like that. Yeah. It was all him always. Colette didn't get a chance to speak on it once because I think now we realize she doesn't want to or you existed you exist well it, it hurt me that she was like backing him up in that you know that's yep. hurtful for me and they're both lying yep. that is not the only thing Shay has done is send a few texts one night drunkenly it is not and you Shay and Colette both absolutely fucking lutely know that and they owe their kids the truth. And that's what yep. was gross to me. And that's why I wanted to speak out because I believed, even after the Arianina thing or whatever her name is, I trusted Shay and I got involved in him with in a business relationship and I was still his friend. And I just want to tell my story because I don't want that to happen to anyone else. If Colette and Shay prance off with their millions and they're happy, skippy, their rest of their life, good. I hope that for them. I don't. And that's fine. <laughs> I want peace and happiness for everybody. I want him to overcome his alcoholism and be this charming, great person that he wants everyone to believe him to be. But this will not fucking happen to one more person. And I think what, what's going to happen by you telling your story, and thank you for being brave for telling your story, is that there might be some more people. So if, you, if there are people out there who have a story to tell about these people, you'll be believed. And I have a platform that you can use. I'm sure that Dana has a platform you can use. S keep speaking out about this type of stuff. Otherwise, these assholes will continue to do it to somebody else. Now, that is not me saying you should and it's on you if it happens. It's not. I'm just saying, imagine the people you can help when you tell the truth. Yeah. Right? That's, that's yeah. the big thing here. And I know one person it's happened to and she was like, I don't want to, don't even mention my name, don't blah, blah, blah. But she's she's also the same person who's like, you don't know the Mormon religion. Either they're going to blame you. They're going to make you look like a slut, like this kind of thing. I'm like, and if they do that, all I have is the truth. I don't have a fucking dime. I just have the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really fucking powerful. It is. You have more. They have millions, but you have the truth, and that's what really what matters. They can they can try to silence you and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I don't know. At this point, I think they're just bracing for everything that's about to come out because this this podcast, honestly, because I didn't. Shay Carl was just kind of on my radar as like I was going to cover him as like one of the OGs. Then yeah. this podcast happened, and I think they thought it was a good idea, and they might be laughing like again, like just being bro, yo bro. Mm. I think Shay Carl is going to regret the moment he did that podcast with Roman Atwood, and I think Roman Atwood's going to regret it too. It is the worst thing I've ever seen. If you go to Roman Atwood's comments on that video, read the comments. Almost 90% of them are women are like, shame on you, asshole. Go read the comments. It'll make you feel good, I promise. Wow, okay. It'll make you feel good. And now that your story's about to come out, and I did reach out to Shay and Colette for comment. Obviously, they're not going to comment. They didn't. Wow. They just ghosted me. They I'm won't. like, hey, yeah. yeah, they're not. Why would they? I'm nobody, right? But I did, and that's fair. So they're allowed to say their thing, but they're not going to. They're just going to stay silent on it because their channel's dead for all intents and purposes now anyway. All they're doing it for now is like recognition and like, look at us, we're we're still there. Just, you know what, Shay Carl, go, go away. For the sake of your family, go away. Mm -hmm. And don't, like? don't say you're owning up to something and you know, act like it didn't happen. Don't say you're owning up. Yeah, like that's what pissed own. me off, they did not own up to what Shay did against his life. He didn't. And, and again, they family. diminished it and then turned to alcohol and then didn't even say, I, he said, yeah, it was the worst thing. He just glossed over the thing. If, so, some, if an alcoholic hits your wife's van while she's driving your kids to school and kills your wife and kids, do we then, oh, he was just an alcoholic. So it just, you know, he's fine. It doesn't really matter. No, it's, no. Again, you can't use it. And they, again, they he was happy to pivot it. to talk about that stuff because it's more socially acceptable to do that. Right. But, Okay, no. so thank you for. T is there anything else you want to say? Because I want to give you an opportunity right now to, to look at Shay and Clay who are watching this video. I'm going to go for a second and okay. grab a coffee. This is right. great. I really appreciate, I appreciate you being you, here. I appreciate you helping me 
tell my story and reaching more people because I, it's really important to me that no one else gets involved with him and gets hurt by him. I, you're brave for doing it. And uh, again, uh, women who are, who've been wronged by anybody in the world, be brave and stand up because like, it, because I think you would say this, do you'd agree that tr telling the truth probably made you feel a lot better. You've been holding this oh in for gosh. years. What was the, what was the relief Such after I released really... that video? Did it not feel good? Yes. I had a rash that cleared up. Like it was great. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, awesome. it's just, it was like a weight I didn't realize was weighing on me so heavy. And the past couple of years, I don't trust anybody. It's like, I have really bad trust issues. And it's like, I felt mm -hmm. that kind of lift up. That's good. good. And you should, again, and that sucks because it's all him and none of that is your fault. None of that should be shouldered on you. And I'm glad you've released it and good for you. Good for you. And I hope good. only good things. Make sure you guys head over to her channel and subscribe. This is the woman that should be lifted up. This is the one that should be making $10 million on YouTube. Not that a-hole Shay Carl. They don't deserve it. Make sure you head over and subscribe. She's got really good content. She's very and, talented. And if you're a woman who can't speak in your situation, DM me and we'll talk about it. Um, yeah. If you want, if you want to, if you need someone to talk to, I will I never that. tell your story. So. I appreciate that. Okay, Dan, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So there you go. Montana Dana, a woman of high integrity. Someone who d doesn't even cross her mind that this multi, multi, multi millionaire guy wants to do things with her and she could cash in on it and she could use it to her advantage and she doesn't do it because she's got integrity. I think the world is missing that. I really do. So I really want to give her props for having the integrity and not just for herself, but because she loves those kids and she doesn't want to break up someone's marriage. It's just crazy. And, and it, it's really telling that he gets really angry at her when she doesn't give up what he wants her to give up because he's probably used to it. Think about that for a second. This really super wealthy, famous guy is like, like a lot of famous people can just go through, can just generally get what they want because rich people can do that. Epstein intensifies. So really, really telling. Again, Dana, I really appreciate being on the show, guys. Thanks for being here with me today at the Dad Challenge Podcast and covering these types of topics because this really matters. It really does. Everything that goes on behind the scenes is fake. And in the end, the only people it really does hurt, well, the wives and the husbands and everything, but are the kids. The kids who do not give informed consent to be a part of these worlds. And now their whole world is out there. And this new bomb drop, it's just another thing that they're all gonna have to deal with as they get older. I think they're starting to wake up to the real to realization that their dad is a is not who he says he is to them too. That's real sad. Shay Carl, get your shit together. You're a dickhead. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing. And don't forget how incredible and valuable you are. People need you here in their lives. You know, stand up for yourself. Hold value in yourself. Don't be a Colette, okay? You are worth way more than a douchebag is gonna do that to you, okay? I will, though. See you tomorrow.